Hi, I'm Maya Berry. Welcome to Viewpoint. Jim is off this week. On tonight's program, we're going to look at the incidents of Islamophobia in U.S. government counterterrorism training and other post-9-11 civil liberties issues with former FBI Special Agent Mike German of the ACLU. Then we'll get an update on the problem of cluster bombs in Lebanon and the latest efforts to eradicate them with George Cody of the American Task Force for Lebanon. But first, I want to welcome Nayef al-Matawa, the creator of the 99 Superheroes, featuring Muslim characters from different nations who join together to fight injustice. The 99 was recently named by Forbes magazine as one of the top 20 trends sweeping the globe. Nayef is also the clinical director of the Sewer Center for Psychological Counseling and Assessment in Kuwait. Nayef, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, I, of course, as you know, um, am incredibly uh, uh, obsessed with, with this cartoon since you started it. So I'm not going to ask you much about um, the specifics of it, other than for the viewers who may not know it and have not heard about it. Give us a sense of why you created it and how long ago this journey started. Sure. I started eight years ago now. And uh, I started with the thesis that the only way to, to battle extremism is to do it through arts and culture. It's what happened in Europe with the Reformation and the Renaissance, but never really happened in our part of the world. And I feel like there needs to be content and storylines that are inspired by our culture or inspired by our religion, but not be the religion itself. And I felt that was the only way to combat extremism. And as the father of five young sons, I really began to worry about who their role models were going to be. And so the 99 really was an attempt to reposition Islam to Muslims. Because my thinking was, if I can go back to the same place that extremists have kind of weaponized our religion, and in its pay place create a animation, which is coming out soon globally, comic books, which have been out for a while, theme parks, one of which opened in Kuwait, fun stuff, then they just become bad guys with bad messages, and you delink them from the religion. Because surely, if, the, if both can be inspired by the same book, then it's That's not right. the book's fault. That's right. So the underlying message, when you say for Muslims, give me both messages, those for, that are targeted for Muslims and perhaps a non-Muslim community for whom this is really quite eye-opening, to look at superheroes that are rooted in, in messages found in the Quran. You know, it's funny you said that, that they're Muslim superheroes. My, one of my mentors is, 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 a, he called, is a reformed Boston Irish Catholic, and he says all these characters are Irish Catholics. Because we, <laughs> we never talk about their religion. You know, because yeah. the because the idea for me is that as far as I'm concerned, people of good heart share equal values irrespective of their religion, and that's what this is about. So the 99 are from 99 different countries, including the Emirates and Saudi and China mm -hmm. and the U.S. They work in teams of three, so the concepts are all about multiculturalism and pluralism. But how we deal with it is Allah the Cosby Show. So we never talk about you know what country you're from, or even though the episode 19 happens in Jeddah and there's episodes in the Emirates and stuff. But that's not the issue. The issue is more about what power do you have. And is it relevant to solve the problem at hand? And that's how they have to negotiate each other's differences. President Obama pointed you out personally in the audience when he convened his entrepreneurial summit um, just last year, yes. specifically saying that he, he thought of no better example of, of implementing what he talked about doing in his Cairo speech than what you're doing with these cartoons. Has the rest of the Arab and Muslim world responded to it that way? And then tell us a bit about the response you've gotten here in the U.S. Sure. So, so I knew going into this I was going to have resistance because anybody with anything new is going to have resistance. And so, you know, our human our human body reacts. Even even animal bodies react the same way. If something new goes into your body, doesn't matter if it's good for you or bad for you. The white blood cells attack to destroy it. And there are some people in society that have self-appointed themselves the white blood cells of society to attack anything new at any time just because it's new. Mm -hmm. So I knew that going into this. But I also knew that it was too important an issue for me to allow to be, get these setbacks. And so initially, you know, my part of the world reacted in a way that you know, some parts didn't allow it in. And it was a bit, it was a bit uh, difficult in the beginning. But the way I dealt with that is I, basically when we did our second round of financing, we did it through an Islamic investment bank in Bahrain without having to change anything. And that made people more comfortable with what we were doing. Because surely if, it's gone, if it got approved by a Sharia board, therefore, it must be OK. But by closing that chapter, we opened up a whole new chapter. Because what happened is after President Obama talked about us, which by the way, one of the most, most important days of my life, and I'm sure will be on the day I die. So it was an amazing thing. Because people like me, I plan every step of every day. And for, for me to be in an audience and hear my name called out, and then for him to talk about it, I'm like, oh my god, when's this going to end? I, I can't believe you know, it. Was, it, it felt good, but it felt like, this is not planned. I, I can't deal with this. <laughs> this transformative <laughs> yeah. moment. Next I was not ready. Me. Next time, tell me. Uh, but it was amazing. Uh, but, but, but as a consequence of that, we brought, got taken to a different level of attention. And so people who don't like President Obama and don't, don't, like, don't like Islam started attacking us. And they used that point that we raised money from a Sharia-compliant uh, bank to bash us here. Obama's Muslim and disproves it. He's trying to brainwash your kids using Sharia-compliant superheroes. Stop the show before it starts. And my favorite, 
was we can't let the Muslims brainwash our children like the Mexicans did with Dora the Explorer. Yeah. Scary. This is, this is incredibly difficult to have when you think, this conversation, when you think about the, your mission in terms of what you started and set out to do. Yeah. I want to give our viewers a sense of what we're talking about sure. here. Um, because this is big. Yeah. You, this is a private sector enterprise that you're engaged in. Yes. You have a message, but at the same time, you actually need to, to make money. Of course. And you sold this program yes. in a cartoon form to the Discovery Network here in the United States. Yes. Um, after doing so, and after some folks like the Glenn Becks of the world, the Pamela Gellers. In fact, we were talking, you mentioned that you happened to be on her website. Uh, again, 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 which I'm very proud of the thing she's accusing me of. Yesterday. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they, post President Obama acknowledging you and the fact that it raised, it elevated the prominence yes. of your work here, um, the expected folks, the expected Islamophobes came after you. Um, what is happening now with the program? So basically, that last October we became an issue in the congressional elections, and that led to our broadcaster getting the jitters, and they kept kind of, you know, not being able to give us an air date, is, 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 and it's been over a year now. And the irony is, it's been over a year been, since, since they we sold, bought it. Yeah, it's been over a year since bought it. And the irony is, the the, the show, um, the first market was the U.S., which is a coup for us, you know, a little company in Kuwait, and it's because it's it's it's, and, and the thing is, I mean, the hub, the 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 the, the, the um, the channel found themselves in unfamiliar territory too. I don't blame them, to be honest. Like I, I, I mean, I, the the CEO of the hub was a mentor to me before she became CEO of the hub. She was involved in the development of the show. Mm -hmm. You know, when she bought it, she knew what she was buying, and her team helped us create season two of the show. So they have ownership of this, but but you know, they're a new channel, and, and their owners kind of got worried about you know what's going to be said. And this is, but this is the modus operandi for you know some of these extreme groups. I mean, in 1970, when when Sesame Street introduced an African American couple, he got banned in the state of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And what happened is the New York Times named and shamed them for doing so, for them to reverse their decision. It seems corporate America, when it's attacked by bigots, will appease them if no one else finds out. But if they're put in a situation where they have to choose between siding with the bigots or siding, ironically, on this side, a concept about tolerance, right. I hope they do the right thing. Let's give our viewers an opportunity to see this. We've got a quick segment we can share with you. The newer stones? Your stone is one of 99. Each bestows a powerful gift upon its bearer. We call Noaf Jabbar the Powerful. And my Noor stone makes me Nora, the Light. So, who am I? You are Dar, the Afflicted. That means I hurt people. We try to use our different powers to do good in the world. To help people. Your Noor Stone has given you a great deal, but if you continue to misuse it, you'll only attract people who'll exploit you. It's pretty clear. I'm part of something bigger. A new family, maybe. The 99. I can see why this might be viewed as so dangerous. Right? I tell you, I mean, according <laughs> to them, you know, right now you become radicalized by watching it. So. Oh boy, it's a, <laughs> I'm afraid I was already there based on their definition. <laughs> We'd like to get you in on the conversation. If you're calling from overseas, the number is 001-202-420-5665. Here in the United States, the number is 1-202-420-5730. Um, I want to ask you, when you for a year, you really haven't talked about this publicly, no. have you? And no. the hope was that, tell me, tell me the strategy, sort of. Well, the strategy, I mean, I was waiting for the strategy. Uh, and, um, but, but basically, you know, I, 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 mean, I, trust, I trusted the hub implicitly because, because Margaret is a good person. Mm -hmm. And I know that it was in her hands, this would have been broadcast a long time ago. I know that to a moral certainty. Um, at the same time, I just feel like, you know, America needs to weigh in on this decision. You know, not just kind of a couple of executives in a boardroom and a couple of bigots in, in their bunkers. You know, America needs to weigh on this because, you know, for, for me, as far as I'm concerned, the, the issue is pretty clear here. There's an issue. There's there's a concept that promotes tolerance that has that has been credited by the president for inspiring tolerance in people, and on the other side, we have people who have inspired mass murderers in Norway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And are, 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 is it really going to be that the mass murder insp inspirers are going to win this one? I mean, I don't, I don't get it. Where's America at today? I mean, the thing is, you know, I expect that in certain places of the world, probably closer to home. Mm -hmm. I don't expect it here. That's why I made sure my kids were born here. I have such high hopes, and I won't let these bigots reinterpret what America is in my mind. 
as you move forward on this, and I know that those watching are, are interested in doing more, uh, what are the types of things that folks can do to sort of weigh in with, with individuals um, to try to make this happen? Because we're talking about a cartoon, but in reality, we're talking about something bigger than a cartoon here. Yeah, we're, I mean, we, I feel that my characters are being judged by the color of my skin. You know, even though they're from different countries and different geographies, and religions never, ever discussed in the series. And um, it's just, you know, and my writers, you know, are, are, are Hollywood. They're, you know, from different religions. And, you know, Stan Berkowitz says he's Italian. I, I don't believe him. He's not Italian. <laughs> you know? So, uh, but, but, but basically, it's, it's, it's something that was done with, and it's, you know, won awards from the World Economic Forum and the United Nations for tolerance. And this is something that, that uh, you know, and, and I feel kind of conflicted talking about it this way because this, it should be others talking about it, not me. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, I, have, I stand to benefit from it, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but the thing is that, you know, we, we've worked a lot, of, very hard, but, but I can, I, for me, like, this is not something I'm going to quit on. I mean, first and foremost, this is a father protecting his sons for, with, from identity issues mm -hmm. and not wanting people to kind of redefine what Islam is to, to him, neither in the Muslim world or in the non-Muslim world. So, um, you're, you're a trained psychologist. Yes. And, and I've watched your TED Talks. Um, and one of the most compelling stories that um, you tell during one of those talks uh, is about the perception of our community, the perception yes. of Muslims. Yes. Um, tell, me, tell me that story. When sure. You, so one of the hats I wear is I get to lecture at the medical school in Kuwait. And one lecture I give every year in February is, is on the biological basis of behavior, which I give an article from the New York Times and an article from New York Magazine. I take away the name of the reporter. I take away the name of the country. Everything is gone except the facts and have them read it out loud. The first article is about a group called the Party of God who wants to ban Valentine's Day because Valentine's a Christian saint. Red is made illegal, no flowers are sold, no roses are sold that day, and any boys and girls caught flirting would get married off immediately. The second article is about a woman complaining that six bearded men in minivans pulled up and interrogated her on the street for talking to a man who wasn't related to her. And I asked the students where they thought these took place. The first one, Saudi students Arabia. Students in Kuwait. In Kuwait. The first one, Saudi Arabia. There's no debate. They all think it's Saudi. The second one, they split between Saudi and Afghanistan. What blows their mind is the first one was in India, not Saudi. It's a part of a Hindu god. It has nothing to do with Islam. The second one was in upstate New York. It's an Orthodox Jewish community. Now, both communities, as insulting as it is to me as a Muslim, both communities responded to this in a way that I deem as healthy. Because both communities said this is not, the Hindus said this is Talibanization. In other words, good Hindus don't act this way. Mm -hmm. This is Islam's influence on us. Mm -hmm. The Jewish woman in upstate New York called these six bearded Orthodox Jewish men stupid Talibans. Mm -hmm. Again, Jews don't act this way, this is Muslims. What did my students in Kuwait say? They said, it's us. And this is very dangerous when a group starts to self-identify as extreme. And that's why kind of my mission with this was to go back and, 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 and get to the, go to the same place that bad guys pulled out their messages and replace them with positive, fun messages. I think that as I think about the response here from, frankly, these professional bigots, I think that's partly why they're responding the way that they are. That they are. This is incredibly effective, actually and that it's, it's piercing the assumptions that both parties are making. And the need to respond to it negatively is because it's going to work. Yeah. Um, is, has that been your experience in the region? It, initially, it was in the region because I mean, people, I mean, people feel, everybody feels like they own religion, right? That's something that you can touch kind of thing. Um, and I was able to kind of, you know, w walk and talk, more, you know, and, and not, not kind of change. For eight years, I've kind of said what I meant and meant what I said, and, and I haven't uh, wavered on that. Here, you know, it's become interesting. I mean, th this, the whole attacks right now are because one of my superheroes, 1% of them, wears a burqa. Right. Right? And the thing is, I don't believe the burqa is part of Islam. I, I don't. Mm -hmm. It's part of Arab culture, yes. Mm -hmm. It got taken in as part of Islam, but it's not part of Islam, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. But out of respect for people who believe it's important to their life, one ninety-ninth or one percent of the characters wears a burqa. A couple wear the hijab, most show their hair. But as bigots usually do, they point at the one thing that's different, right. not the things that are similar. Right. So in a way, the 99 have the superhero ability of exposing bigots irrespective of what culture they launched them. I like that line. When you started this eight years ago, is this where you hoped you'd be eight years later? This is beyond my imagination. <laughs> I mean, this is, I mean, the, the, you know, I wanted to make a dent on how Islam was being perceived. The idea came to me in the back of a taxi cab you know, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life, and and the fact you know that we're still around eight years later um, is just it's 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 amazing. You know, there's been a lot of hard work, a lot of luck, and a lot of not mistaking luck for skill, which is very important. <laughs> it's very easy to do. Very easy to do. Um, tell me, moving forward, where do you, where do you hope to be a year from now? Where do you hope to be, you know, five years from now? With, so, the, with the 99. So we just raised our third round of capital from Abraj Capital in Dubai. Uh, so the, and. Uh, 
to, to finance season two of the animation, which is in production right now. Uh, so we, we've sold it to Cartoon Network in Asia, NBC in the Middle East, um, ATV in Turkey, we're in I Ireland, Australia, uh, and the U.S. Uh, but, you know, ironically, it, you know, the, the TV series is going to actually show in Saudi before it shows in the U.S., even though that's where initially we had the issues. And uh, so two years from now, one year from now, we're going to be on global television. We're going to be in the U.S. one way or another. I'm confident of that. And we're going to have the next Spider-Man. I think we'll be in the U.S. on networks, and if not, that's the wonderful thing of the Internet. And I thank you so much for being with us today. We really do appreciate it. I want to mention that there's an amazing documentary made about um, the 99 and your journey to make uh, the cartoon. It's called Wham Bam um, Islam, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Islam, 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 Islam but, yeah. but it's got a rhyme, so yeah. I'll say it incorrectly. Yeah. Um, it's airing on PBS October 13th. October 13th in all of America except New York and L.A. It, those dates, October 16th. But Very check good. your local PBS listings. Very good. And keep your fingers in the crescent for us. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. being with us. On our website, you can get more information on this at uh, www.aiusa.org. We'll be back to examine the tragedy of Lebanon's cluster bombs and the latest effort to ban them with George Cody of the American Task Force for Lebanon. And more of your calls.